it's hard enough to cut these things and get them all to fit in. And then once you've got them all cut, plumbing them is kind of a challenge, yeah? Oh, yeah. You look like I did last night. <laughs> Then you've got this whole manifold here because we have to control every column of water coming out the top of these. Otherwise, if you have all this uneven water and starts splashing around, looks weird. We want all those columns of water to be the same height and it flows out evenly from the front of the wall. A lot of times what we'll do just to simplify it is go down to one. <laughs> Next year. Let's get some Brian action here. Detail work, I know, is actually one of your most favorite parts. I wouldn't say it's my favorite no, part. No, it's, it's one of the most necessary parts. You always seem to look like you're enjoying yourself when you're doing it. <laughs> Tell the folks out there what you're thinking when you're doing. My, you want to know what's exactly on my mind Yes. Right no, I don't, but everybody that's watching does. Just between me and you, I'm really tired. Jack, we are back at day three. Yeah, hump day, man. Hump day, we have got a lot to get accomplished today. Number one priority is this fountainscape. There is a lot of work to do with it. I know Brian got a lot of cutting done yesterday for our fabricating. Now we've got to actually get our liner in place. We've got two pretty good sized seams to do, and then all the plumbing associated with the fountainscape. Then we have to start closing it all in with our boulder work. The biggest thing I don't want to have happen is this thing sticks out like a sore thumb. So we have to really make it blend into the entire project. And doing all the rock work, so that it complements the rest of the pond is going to be really key. Cool. As Jack was just saying, we've got a lot of tedious stuff out of the way, minus the plumbing for the fountainscape action that's happening. We've got a lot of the stack slate elements in there. We've got urns, we've got walls, as well as the boulder work that's going to take place over in here and really tie everything back together. But first things first, we've got to get all of the sand and excavation done, and then we're going to bring in our other piece of liner and get the two pieces seamed together because we are unable to pull off an overlap again over on this part of the project. That's going to take a little bit of time this morning just to get us rolling. But once we get that done, we can get all of those stack slate elements back in and get them dry fit to where they need to be and then really start working our plumbing in, filling the insides of them with gravel so they're not going to be tipping over as we're backfilling around them, get our boulder work in and that kind of stuff. So today, that fountainscape is going to eat up a major portion of our day. But I know with the Atlantis Water Gardens gang, as well as the rest of the members of Team Aquascape, we can definitely make light work of it. But we need to pay attention to the detail, which is, as you guys know, very, very, very important in any aspect of our job to make it look killer but also be super functional and withstand the test of time. They're gonna finish up the excavation and then we're gonna bring that liner in and then we'll get that seam going. set for our foundation. Right now what we're doing is getting these really nice and level because if we don't level them, it's gonna come off weird in the face. It won't, it'll be heavier on one side, lighter on the other. So it's really important we get these level. We're gonna fill these with about a foot of this pea stone. It's just gonna go in there and that's just gonna provide ballast. It's gonna hold it in place so it won't move around when we get to back filling and putting rocks around it. Now that we've got this one set, we can get this one leveled up and that's what sets the tone for the rest of the fountainscape. Then we can marry in our large urn. We've got other urn pieces. Then all those tops that Brian cut can get put on and we can finish this thing up and get some plumbing in here. So this just goes to show you how important laying everything out, kind of dry fitting it, yeah. and then getting the foundation set so that everything else goes nice and smooth, right? The old adage, you know, measure twice, cut once, that's kind of what we're looking at here. Perfect. So once the gravel goes in and we get the weight inside the walls, we'll start getting the other pieces attached. I will cut back in the video and show you how the plumbing is going to be worked. You can see we've got the three inch line. Actually, there's two of them coming out of here. One of them is going to go to the biofalls. The other is going to go to the soundscape that you can see Atlantis guy's working on so I will make sure to cut back to that and show you how that plumbing works because I know for a lot of you we've had a lot of questions on our channel regarding how we plumb some of these custom fountainscapes. I'll be sure to show that to you so that you guys know and you guys can do it at home.
pretty cool. We've got this giant rock over here. Such an important part to every project is adding some accent boulders into the landscape. If the only rocks that sit around here are just in the pond, then it doesn't have that natural look. And it'll make it look like it's been here forever. You look off into the distance and like I got that big rock way back in there. We've got the giant rock that Pergola sits in over there. We want to create some big boulders here and there. The last minute, Stuart from Universal Rocks sent us some of these big character boulders. Now what's great about these is, Jack, turn around really quick. Oh! <laughs> That's what's awesome about them. They're hollow, they're light, they're made out of styrofoam, and they look incredible. In fact, when we really look at the texture of this rock compared maybe some of the colors and textures that are sitting in the pond over here, they're really close. So it's gonna fit in nice, and by the time we get some soil up back around it and some ferns and plants around it, it's gonna look incredible. Thank you, Stuart. Make sure you check them out. Universal rocks, all kinds of sizes, all kinds of shapes, all kinds of colors. What in the landscape this thing like we're in the Colombian rainforest I'm thinking over more here. Like Amazon, <laughs> style. You said Pacific Northwest. Yeah, I mean it's thing. kind of Pacific Northwest, and really we're kind of limited on what we can do because it is January. Yeah. In January in Chicago, we don't have like flats of annuals and all kinds of stuff. But it being just after Christmas <laughs> and everybody just tossing Holy Christmas cow. trees, I was able to collect a couple Christmas trees <laughs> that we can use here and there. Uh, that's a couple. <laughs> We can just put platform on the bottom, just kind of stick them into the landscape. As a backdrop, I mean, yeah. like it just keeps going. I think we got enough. I'm thinking at the end of the artist of the year building everything, bonfire. maybe a bonfire, yeah. right? Well, you might have one in the garden. Like, you know, <laughs> hey, this is going to be perfect. Like, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's literally a like, mountain. Very Pacific Northwest. Yeah. I like it. Where's my chair? Oh, they pulled them out of my truck. I, every day I grab three more. <laughs> It's hard enough to cut these things and get them all to fit in, and then once you've got them all cut, plumbing them is kind of a challenge, yeah? Oh, yeah. You look like I did last night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're, what we're doing is coming in the back of all of these wall sections, and then you've got a vertical stack coming up through this hole. Then you've got this whole manifold here. We have to control every column of water coming out the top of these. Otherwise, if you have all this uneven water, it starts splashing around, looks weird. We want all those columns of water to be the same height, and it flows out evenly from the front of the wall. A lot of times what we'll do, just to simplify it, is go down to one. <laughs> <laughs> Next year. What's your plan? <laughs> <laughs> so we want to bring the water right up against the patio. There's going to be a block wall in here, really just, just to make it super interactive, ties into what this whole bar, bar area is. And then we were going to have big cooling area. We're looking like 13 or 40, 14 inches of water inside this area. And then we've got waterfalls on the backside that are all feeding into here. This post for the pergola was right in the way, so we're like, let's just put it inside the pond. So what we did was we dug down to where the floor is. We're actually raising up the edge of the pergola. We're going to get a gap underneath it. We're going to slide our fabric and liner underneath it, so then when we're done, this will actually be in the water. It's gonna be pretty cool seeing the fish swim around this thing and then up and down back to the pond. How's the success? Very high. All right, so liner is going in for this next section of deep stream, shallow pond, if you will. You can see we've got the post raised up. The next part is going to be fishing this liner underneath that column. You can see Corey working on that right now. Looks like he did a pretty good job of getting that. 
in through this stream. We're gonna end up having to do another seam in through here because the liner from this section of the pond does not go far enough back that way and we don't have the elevation change to make that happen. We'll get this in, get this seam done. In the meantime, we're gonna do a brick wall as well where Jack's at and it'll kind of curve that way. And we'll bring that patio, as you've seen in a lot of our videos, bring the patio right over the top of that brick wall. We'll bring that patio over the top of that brick wall. Let's get some Brian action here. Detail work, I know, is actually one of your most favorite parts of the project. I wouldn't say it's my favorite no, part. No, it's, it's one of the most necessary parts. Mm. You always seem to look like you're enjoying yourself when you're doing it. <laughs> Tell the folks out there what you're thinking when you're doing. My, you want to know what's exactly on my mind? Yes. Right now? No, I don't, but everybody that's watching does. Just between me and you, I'm really tired. <laughs> like, I'm, super, <laughs> I'm super tired. I know Greg said like, hey, this winter I want you guys to take it easy. We're just gonna work in the sandbox. But this is like the flower garden show for I think two months. Normally we do it in like eight days or whatever. Mm -hmm. We have two months we have of this. Nine weeks of this. Yeah, so uh, I really hope all of you are enjoying this because it's day three. <laughs> <laughs> Out of 60. So let's not talk details right now, okay? Oh. Like, and uh, you know what would be funny? Let's try to remember this exact conversation two months from now and see see how I see where you're at. <laughs> He's already burned out. <laughs> Not a whole lot done today, but when you're doing stuff like this with the fountainscapes and you're bringing walls together and you're cutting in urns and you're cutting in bowls and you're trying to do all the plumbing, like the plumbing's kind of crazy in itself, things just come to a screeching halt and there's no way we can continue to move on the waterfalls unless this gets done because it's like foundation to everything. So we really kicked butt the first day. You know, we got the whole pond basically done. The second day we continued to move with the bridge and everything else and then we got to this little section and it's only like like six feet and it's amazing because we did 30 feet over here the first day and now we're getting six feet done but it's gonna look amazing and I think that's the part that a lot of customers need to understand like the cost of that because the intricacy of it all is why it gets so expensive there's just so much detail that has to happen with it but the detail is what makes it amazing so hopefully you guys are gonna enjoy this part I think we've got a couple little special elements that we haven't even shown you we're gonna throw in there at the very end but I think that's a wrap for today Tomorrow, we're gonna focus on waterfalls and hopefully actually get the waterfalls done and start landscaping this thing. The goal is by Friday morning-ish. I know that pond guy, if you've heard of him, really wants it done Friday morning for photo shoots. I don't know if Friday morning is gonna work out, but we will have it close to Friday morning. Thanks for watching.